How many have you forgiven today? Chapter 16, Part 2. Wow, I honestly wouldn't have guessed that. Mod nods. Pinky is different. Then again, you're just as different. Anon can't deny that. He can only guess that Pinky didn't tell Maud about him being a different species. Well, you're right about that one. So, Pinky didn't tell you that I'm a human? Maud shakes her head. No. Have you ordered yet? Pinky asks Maud. No, I've been waiting for you two to show up so our meals can come out at the same time. Perfect. Before we get into the thick of it, let's order first. Anon can only shrug at this entire situation as he picks up his menu and looks over what he wants. Wow, so that's Anon? Cadence whispers to herself. She is surprised that her aunt is friends with something so different. Then again, he doesn't seem to act like a royal, but there's a certain air about him that she can't quite put her hoof on. Cadence can remember all of the great things her aunt told her about him, she wants to meet him right now, but holds herself back for Twilight's sake. It looks like the three of them are placing orders right now for their meals. What do you think he's getting? Twilight asks. I'm not too sure. Cadence takes a second to look him over. If I had a guess, I would say meat. How do you know that? It's just the way he carries himself. How he scans the room, takes in what he sees. It's a lot like how a griffin acts. Not to mention he has forward-facing eyes. It's a lot of small things that make a picture. By all means, I could be wrong, but that's just the gut feeling I have. Gut feeling isn't very scientific, Cadence. Cadence looks over to face Twilight. <laughs> that's the thing, Twilight. Not everything can be solved with logic. Sometimes you just need to go with a feeling on the inside. A little voice that tells you that something is right or wrong. A little voice? That seems so odd. Twilight reads books and tries to learn how to solve her problems. She then feels her mind flashing back to when Applejack and her were about to fall off a cliff in the Everfree. How she knew that she wouldn't be alright if Applejack let go of her. Yet despite her logic, she believed in her friends and was alright in the end. It feels like it's been so long since she just believed in something that wasn't written or seen. Anon, Pinky, and Maud all sit in silence as they wait for their meals. Anon will admit this entire situation is rather odd. He's still confused by the fact that these two are related. Pinky is sitting with her usual smile, and Maud has a blank expression on her face. It's a face that Anon knows rather well. He's been subject of the stone face from time to time, yet it seems this mare is always stone-faced. It's hard, but not impossible to read her emotions. She looks nervous. Anon has no idea how he knows that, but he has a gut feeling. Perhaps he should try and lighten the mood. I have to say that meeting someone that's actually normal is nice. Hey! Pinky shouts with a pout. Maud nods. Ponies tend to get emotional over little things. I find it odd that they will almost always hug or make physical contacts when they're distressed. I know, right? When I feel like that, I usually want to be left alone, but... Ponies will hug the closest thing to them, which unfortunately is me most of the time. Does it ever bother you when ponies will invite themselves into your home without asking? Are you kidding me? Anon points his thumb at Pinky. She does it all the time. In fact, this morning, she snuck into my room to tell me about this dinner. Maud nods. Pinky has been like that since we were fillies. I'm right here, you know. Pinky crosses her hooves this time, increasing her pout level. You know what, Maud? I like you. Anon says without hesitation. You're probably one of the most human-like ponies I've ever met. I'm not sure how to take that comment, but I will assume it was a compliment. Maud answers. Sure is. Now, what do you do for a living? I study rocks. So you're a geologist? Anon notices a certain twinkle in Maud's eye. You know what a geologist is? Anon nods. Of course I do. There were many humans back where I come from who studied rocks and other things that had to do with our planet. Wow, I can only imagine what types of rocks are there. Pinky can only sit with a smile as she watches these two talking. She's never seen Maud so excited to talk about her work to someone. Pinky admits that she doesn't really understand what Maud does, and because of that, Maud doesn't bring up her work. 
So to have someone who can actually understand and chat with her is making this night all the greater for Pinky. Everything is turning out better than she expected. Twilight finds her mind flooding with so many questions. It seems that on some level Anon is communicating with that pony rather well. How? In fact, who is that pony? Why is Pinky there? There's just too many questions for Twilight to handle. She must know. Cadence hears something happening behind her. She looks over to Twilight and notices that she's out of her seat. Twilight? I have to know what's going on. Twilight states. Twilight, we're just here to observe, nothing more. I, I can't just sit here. Twilight says while shaking uncontrollably. I need to know more. Twitchy tail, achy hooves, rumbly tummy, itchy nose. This is bad. Pinky looks around the restaurant. Her pinky sense is telling her that something bad is about to happen if she doesn't stop it. She instantly finds the source as she notices Twilight walking towards them from afar. Uh, you two keep talking! I gotta use the little Philly's room. Pinky quickly hops out of her seat and takes off. Well, that was odd. Anon adds as he returns his attention to Maud. So, do you have a favorite stone? Maud nods. Sedimentary. That's a rather common stone. That's also the type my pet is. Anon chuckles. You have a pet rock? She nods as she puts Boulder onto the table. Yes. Anon can't help but think back to some funny stuff on Earth. You know, someone used to sell pet rocks on Earth. Over one million of them were sold. Wow, well, your kind must love rocks. Anon shrugs. It was mostly for the novelty, I think. Maud looks at Boulder and then remembers why she brought him. I almost forgot. Boulder wants to apologize for hitting you. What? Now Anon is confused. Uh, sorry, but I'm a bit lost here. Pinky threw him at you. He's sorry for that. Wait, this rock is the same rock that hit him all those months ago? Weird. Uh, well, thanks for the apology. Uh, no hard feelings? Maud gives a small nod. Thanks. It's been on his mind the entire time. Yeah, definitely weird. But then again, Anon is in a world with talking ponies. Who knows, maybe this rock does talk. Anon doesn't really want to think about this. So, uh, may I ask you a personal question? You may. Has Pinky always been... Anon tries to find the right word to use. Well, like she is now. Maud understands. Since Pinky said that she is her sister, Anon is wondering how they're related. She became the way she is after getting her cutie mark. Cutie marks. The ultimate confusion in this world. So Pinky's cutie mark was enough to turn her into the pony she is today? Huh. So much stuff for Anon to handle in one day. He feels like his brain is about to fry. Well, I have to say, compared to Pinky, you're rather down to earth. I guess. Though Pinky does have her own charm. She can make friends easily and every pony is happy to see her. Most ponies just avoid me. Not that I mind. Anon gets it. Though he honestly finds Maud to be a breath of fresh air. There are just so many ponies in this place that are happy or just overly emotional. Yet Maud is a stark contrast against that norm. Kinda like him. Twilight stops when she notices Pinky walking directly towards her. Not only that, but she looks angry. A look Twilight has never seen before. Once Pinky is close enough, she takes the opportunity to speak first. What are you doing, Twilight? She asks. I just want to know what's going on. Pinky takes a step closer to Twilight. I've been planning this dinner for a long time, and you're not going to ruin it. Pinky, I swear I won't interrupt. Just give me a few minutes. No. What? The tone Pinky said that in was downright menacing. I said no. You're not getting anywhere near Anon or my sister. Your sister? Twilight looks past Pinky at the gray pony, but her vision is cut off as Pinky takes a step in front of her. Yes, my sister. Now go back to whatever it is that you were doing. I have to know how Anon can understand your sister. Twilight is about to try and walk past Pinky, but is stopped when something grabs her firmly from behind. Twilight, will you stop? Cadence whispers loudly. You're starting to draw attention. 
Twilight looks around the room and can see a lot of ponies starting to direct their attention towards her. Each of them give various looks of judgment. Twilight's ears pin back as she comes to her senses. Sorry. Before anything else can be said, Twilight runs towards the front door of the restaurant, Cadence not far behind her. Anon hears a loud noise come from the front door and turns around to see a weird-looking pony running out of the restaurant. Was that another alicorn? All done. Pinky sits back in her seat. So, what have you two been talking about? Anon looks away from the front door and returns his attention to Pinky. Various things. Nothing too special. Anon answers. Are you enjoying yourselves? Anon and Maud give a nod. Great, because I have a surprise for you two. Surprise? Anon asks hesitantly. Mm-hmm. Pinky nods. Let's eat and we can get the show on the road. Well, no use in trying to get Pinky to spill the beans. Anon looks down to his meal. Chicken or something that looks like chicken, he doesn't know. It smells great, though, so he might as well enjoy himself before Pinky does whatever it is that she's planning. Celestia lets out a sad sigh. It's so boring around the castle. She has no idea where everyone has gone. Twilight is missing, Luna is locked away in her room, Blue Blood is asleep, Cadence is most likely with shining armor, and Anon is back at his shop. There isn't a single pony around for Celestia to talk to. Hello, princess. Celestia stops as she looks down to see Fluttershy bowing before her. Oh, hello Fluttershy. What is it that you're up to? Fluttershy rises from her bow. I'm going to the dining hall to get something to eat. Celestia feels a brow raise. Wait a second, why is Fluttershy still here? Wasn't she supposed to return to Ponyville today? Fluttershy, why are you still here? Didn't I tell you that you were free to return to Ponyville? Fluttershy nods. You did, but as it turns out, Anon invited me to a party. So I thought it would be alright to stay here until then. Fluttershy starts to feel a bit timid. That's alright, isn't it? I don't want to overstay my welcome. This is an interesting surprise. So Anon has invited Fluttershy to join his party too? That wasn't something she was expecting, but perhaps something happened between them that has made Anon less wary around her. Well, it's none of her business, but she's glad to hear that Anon is at least trying to open himself up to ponies of his past. You are free to stay as long as you'd like. I'm happy to hear that you will be joining us for his party. Now that Celestia thinks about it, she hasn't spoken to Fluttershy much. Perhaps this is a good time to get to know her. Do you mind if I join you for dinner? Not at all. Fluttershy says with a smile. Very well. What am I looking at exactly? Anon is stuck in place as he looks into the room where Pinky stands. Maud and him both look rather uncomfortable, but Pinky's smile hasn't lifted yet. We're at a formal dance competition! Pinky shouts with enthusiasm. Anon takes in the room full of ponies all dressed to impress as a few of them chat with each other. It definitely looks like a popular event, as the place has a decent amount of ponies present. He can see that there is a set stage for the judges, as well as seats against the walls for the contestants to sit and wait for their turn. Everything looks professionally made, and that has Anon on guard. Why are we here? Anon asks, confused as to why Pinky brought him here. Pinky somehow places her hoof on Anon's shoulder and pulls him down so she can whisper into his ear. Maud is going to go off to study rocks once her visit is over, and I want her to have as much fun as possible. I don't know what you two talked about, but I do know that she loves dancing, but never gets a chance to do it. Please, for me, just show my sister a good time. This is weird on so many levels that Anon has no idea how to process this. He just met Maud, and while she's a lovely pony, he's not too sure how to approach a situation like this. Still, as Panky gives him her signature puppy eyes and quivering lip, he knows his choices are limited at this moment. Isn't this weird? Not at all. Trust me, Maud will love this. Anon lets out a sigh. <sighs> Alright. Pinky lets go of Anon and looks over to her sister. Great news, Maud. You're going to dance with Anon. Maud looks at her sister, then to Anon, and back at her sister. Pinky, don't you think this is a bit sudden? Sometimes you gotta take life by the wings, then make it fly. Pinky starts pushing Maud and Anon ahead of her. 
No, hurry and sign up. The contest is gonna start soon. Anon looks down at Maud as she looks up at him. <sighs> we might as well do it. Pinky's just gonna keep bugging us all night if we don't. Maud gives a nod of understanding. They have no choice in the matter, but the least they can do is enjoy the evening that is being given to them. There was a lot of close calls in this part. At least nothing bad bad happened, but wow. Mere inches away from utter disaster. Anyways, let's get on to our positive donators. Top donators Bobcat GJF, Zarsex30, J10 Man, Only One Thing, Saru Orion, and Iron Sky. Darkside, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moon, Heart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Stu Hex, Sword Brother and Mordred, Omicron Lyra, Will Chris, Twinkie, Ride Soul, Badass Waffle, Shadow Moon, Luigi88, Chancellor Crust, Big Smoke369, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.